In this video, we're going to install and set up Flutter with everything you need to get started developing iOS apps. The first thing to note is that although Flutter is a cross-platform framework, you will need a macOS device to actually build the app onto an iOS target. So today, I'll be walking through the steps of setting up Flutter for iOS in VS Code on a Mac. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Terminal, and we're going to install the Xcode command line tools. This package provides certain development tools and utilities that we'll need later. Next, we're going to install Homebrew. Go to brew.sh and just copy this command right here and paste it in. You'll need to type in your password for this. Homebrew is the most popular and widely used package manager for macOS, and it allows you to install software through the command line. Once it's done, copy these three lines and paste them in your terminal and run them. Next, we're going to install VS Code. If you already have it installed, you can skip the step to the timecode on the screen. But if not, we're going to use Homebrew to install it. Brew install cask Visual Studio Code. You can also install VS Code from the website. I just prefer using the command line because it's faster and requires fewer steps. Once that's installed, go ahead and open up VS Code. You can set these up if you like, but we're going to skip that part for now and go straight to the Extensions tab. We're going to look for Flutter. And we're going to install this Flutter extension from darkcode.org. Now we're going to go up to the command palette and type in Flutter and Flutter New Project. This will pop this up. We're going to download the SDK. I would recommend making a new development folder in your root user directory and downloading it to there. Once that's done, you're going to see this output. And now we need to add Flutter to our path. So copy whatever it has here and go back to your terminal and open up the .cshenv file in your root user directory. Here you're going to type out export path equals and then paste what you copied and then colon dollar sign path and then press command x to exit and y to save enter and now go back to vs code open up the terminal and try running flutter doctor okay so if you get an output like this that means that you have successfully added your path now you can use that flutter command now see how we have a red x here for develop for ios we have some extra things we need to do so first off we're going to need to install xcode the easiest way to do this is to just get it from the app store because this is one of apple's own products but I'm on a virtual machine today, so I'll be downloading it from the website. So once that is downloaded, open up Xcode, agree, and make sure you select iOS to download. So while we wait for that simulator to download, we can go ahead and take care of CocoaPods. So let's go back to the terminal and type in brew install CocoaPods. CocoaPods is a dependency manager for iOS projects and is required to build Flutter projects on iOS. All right, once that is installed, we can go back to VS Code, open up a new terminal and run Flutter Doctor again. All right, now we are able to see we have a green check mark on Flutter, the Xcode, iOS, VS Code, everything's good. If you're not developing for Android or web, you won't need these other ones that are not checked. All right, so now let's go to our command palette and open up a new project with Flutter. Locate where your SDK is. And let's try again. 
I'll open up an example application here. All right, so we have the example app right here. So now we want to select a device. Go ahead and start the iOS simulator. The first time you do this, this will take a while to start up. Okay, so now there's several different ways to build the project and have a display on here. I like to use FN F5 because it shows this little bar up here. All right, so now we have the sample app displaying here. You can press this button and have it reflect in the text right here. And now the reason why I like this bar is because of the hot reload and reset buttons. So if we do something like change the background color and then we press the reload button, it'll reload without actually changing the state. So notice how the state was kept. But now if we restart, that will restart the app and reset the state as well. So with that being said, you're all set to start developing your iOS app in Flutter.